Welcome to the Bold Analysis, ladies and gentlemen. Miguna Miguna returned back in this country on 20th October in a very glamorous event that was facilitated by the government of Kenya with an intention that, of course, he has got the freedom but that freedom would also be extended to, for him to get justice. In fact, freedom without justice is not it. However, the challenge, the biggest challenge he's facing is that he's using a narrative that the enemy of my enemy is my friend. To approach issues that way, he's in for a rude shock. The enemy of your enemy is not your friend. <laughs> Very open uh, narrative that because maybe William Ruto is enemy to Uhuru Kenyatta and Raila Odinga before the previous before the general election, so those people, so William Ruto is his friend. I want to say that was a, fas a fallacy because the revelations that are now coming from him are just uh, proving that point. Miguna Miguna's passport was delivered to him around September. And if you look at the screen, if you search, I was just going to do a research when it was delivered. Now, that story came around 20th September. That was a week after William Bruto swearing in, because William Bruto was sworn in on 13th September. So if you cite, that's what you'll find. That's what was published around that time. So I think some few days uh, when Ruto took power, he lifted the red alerts and Miguel Miguna's passport was delivered to him. Then he was supposed to come a little bit earlier. Then the dates were changed and he had now to come on 20th October. Six days before him returning to the country. Cases that he had pressed against Karanji Kibichu, C.S. Martini, and other government officials who allegedly were responsible for his forceful detention and inhuman treatment that he suffered in 2018, the cases were dropped. And I want us to look at his Twitter page. He has done a Twitter thread confirming the same. He's saying, who is Justice C. Meoli? On whose orders did on whose ordered orders did she dismiss four of my cases against Fred Matiani, Kibesho, and others on 14th October, six days before my return to Kenya? Without notice to me instead of rendering judgment, the defendants who hadn't defended. They have not defended themselves. Um, C.S. Noli must be investigated for su, su, oh my goodness, for she has presiding over multiple cases against state perpetrators of impunity and other apologists in secret without notice to me. I have instructed advocates to reinstate the cases and pursue action against the judge. The rules of the court and common practice around the world don't permit a single judge to preside over and determine more than one case in one sitting. Yet Justice C. Meoli purported to dismiss more than four cases I had filed against various parties in one sitting without notice. Um, I, I have seen another unconfirmed report here that Meoli was the night time registrar of December 2007. She saw Mwai Kibaki in the failing light of a troubled desk. Someone has just um, um, responded to that. It is saying that I, I cannot confirm. I'm just saying what is said there. So what happened to Miguna Miguna that the cases were dropped? One thing that I think even the general understanding perception was, because when William Ruto took over government, or yes, uh, uh, started uh, his reign, 
there's a constant a consistent trend where revisit or rather revenge missions on people who had worked with uh, the previous regime who maybe were not in good books with William Ruto and some other people in government. And I know that when the Gunam Gunam was coming, he was expecting that he would ride on that. If you are keen, Dennis Itumbi at campaign trail was very con- was consistently attacking Matiangi over the Rorakaland issues. But ever since William Ruto was sworn in as the president, Dennis Itumbi is no longer talking about CS Matiangi. In fact, they've, they've really gone quiet on attacking Matiangi. I want to say one thing. Look at uh, this video. Um, that is the video when uh, Matiangi was meeting Ruto. I think that was the first cabinet meeting because Ruto held his first cabinet meeting with Uhuru's cabinet members. And they were shaking hands in a heartily manner. President Ruto was actually embracing them. And if you remember, even though at campaign trail, um, there was a lot of instructions. In fact, security agencies came under sharp criticism from uh, the Kenya Kwanzaa team that perhaps they were being used to manipulate the polls in favor, rather to campaign in favor of Raila Odinga. And if you do a honest assessment, I know, I know the report will be out. Um, from different agencies, maybe the, the IBC and different agencies are going to give their report, evolution report of the last general election. I don't think the uniformed men were partisan. I don't think they showed favorism. And if it was to be used, if security was lapses was to, security was, apparatus was to be used to, man, to, to, to maybe uh, uh, favor manipulate the post, then Raila Dinga would be the president. So I've always taken that narrative. And I think even when where William Ruto is seated, he knows very well that after running that narrative that Matiangis were out to uh, maybe campaign, it, learned, it so came out that Matiangi emerged amongst the cleanest hands in from that general election. Now, um, in his compensation, in that case, uh, Miguna Miguna was demanding a 2.8 billion compensation for the perpetrators. Um, I totally feel uh, the images, what happened, what befell Miguna Miguna is not something that you even want to happen to your worst enemy. It was, he has, he has said it over and over again, the way he was sedated, held on ground, sedated, then reported to to, 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 to Dubai and conscious and regain consciousness when he was actually in Dubai. So what happened was not really something that you can uh, take. And I want I, have, I was listening to Miguna Miguna's speech in uh, Kemu. I, he was invited there to give a speech in a cultural day event. And I've just gotten this snippet addressing a matter of this issue a bit, um, what might have happened before that event. Now you said in the governance that uh, the government was supposed to follow the due process because the protection itself is a process. Now, don't you think that you also put this country into a problem one time, 2017? Uh, you saw in uh, the Right Honorable Raila Molo Odinga when we had already an elected uh, government in place. Don't you think at that time you were also supposed to follow the due process? <laughs> because already, I, in my view, I thought you also put this country in a problem. Today, maybe you could have been, you know, somewhere else, maybe Uganda or somewhere else as refugees. So what's your take on that? You have been deported? Yes. Then what about the one of you, Sonny Raya Odinga? Thank you very much. Which process did I not follow? So that's number one. Which is the due process I did not follow? I went to Uru Park like a citizen. Raya Odinga stood there as a lawyer. I came with my pen, I came with my commission stamp, I signed, I stamped as a lawyer, which I am paid to do, which I have a license to do, and he swore. Right? <laughs> Was he charged? Was Rael Odinga charged? Who was his coalition brother? Uru Kenyatta. 
the president that I am supposed to have been removing. So now Miguna, a lawyer who commissioned the signature, is guiltier than the one who wanted to replace Uhuru Kenyatta. Are you really normal? So you can tell that they were scared of this. There was nothing else. You take me to court and you look like an idiot. That's what they were scared of. I would have made lunch and supper and dinner combined into one in a theater in court. And they didn't. They couldn't stand that. So when you come here and say you swore I Ludinga in, and why shouldn't I? Finally. Because he won an election. He did. I believe he did. So should I support the imposter that stole the election instead of the one that won? Even if I hate the one that won. And I didn't like him. I just did it because he won. <laughs> you see, me, I'm a very clear person. I don't cover for all these things. So, Meguna Meguna is simply saying something that courts betrayed him. But if you ask me, the move to withdraw these cases against C.S. Mateng and Kibichu thrived on President Ruto's motive to contain Meguna. Way back before even he, was, he was coming to Kenya, I believe President Ruto had already uh, envisioned in his mind that he had to contain Meguna. So all those conversations that were there, the way, you know, he's been locked out of, uh, not even locked out, but now he's not now getting media coverage. After the indemnity drama in Standard Media Group, I think the other media houses then feared uh, calling him in the interviews, maybe in their shows. And he also threatened to file some lawsuits against some media houses. And, and so all this has been running around. Now, Ruto became wary of Miguna Miguna because these cases were going to be perceived, uh, were going to be taken as not Miguna Miguna's personal efforts or, or quest for justice. Quest for Miguna Miguna's justice in the media arena could still be reported and observed as Ruto's plan to go after Uhuru Kenyatta. And so that was going to set Uhuru Kenyatta on a collision path with William Ruto. Something that William Ruto had foreseen that if Meguna Meguna continues with that and goes after, you know, a, a case where there's this case going on against this, against that, it may not be seen because the truth of the matter here is what happened to Meguna Meguna happened when William Ruto and Uhuru Kenyatta were actively in charge of government. So, um, Janyando's assertion that Uhuru Kenyatta was the problem was simply trying to take a political stand because you, you, you know you have to, he, he, wanted, he wanted to take a stand. But Ruto was actively involved in what befell Miguna. So the understanding was not really well packaged. And Uhuru was, President Ruto was avoiding that. Because you know Miguna Miguna's case and I believe it has never been told. I hope one day he will give us an interview so that we sit down and we just get to tell people what exactly happened from home. So Miguna Skates was creating a momentum and government would end up paying billions to him. And this this was going to create even other people. It's not, he's not the only one. By the way, even this channel, I know some five people had reached out and saying, yo, Kevin, I'm out of the country. I can't come back because of this, because of that. And now the quest for justice was going to see government paying a lot of money. You know, 2.8 billion, that's the compensation he was demanding. Somehow, the courts also, the criminal justice system is also highly compromised. He's saying that it's a common practice, that if you give a judgment, you must serve it to both parties. You must notify the complainant and uh, the accused. But in this case, according to what he's saying, going against the wild common practice that only the complainant 
was sacked or rather was notified but he was not notified how did it take all that long for him to be notified now he's really in out and i believe that everyone has a home miguna miguna i may be wrong but if you ask me miguna miguna is headed back to rider if you check his twitter page i think he has toned down on um Miguna has toned down on um, attacking Rilo Dinga. He's no he's no longer into that line a bit. I have checked his Twitter. Um, he's not talking about Rilo for quite some time. And as things go, the best, the safest place he can be, and to craft a team and to work towards a direction, is to head back to Rilo because. That's where he's going to have a bearing. There is no bearing in in Ruto. There is no bearing even going to Central. But with Raila side, even even in 2017 when he was coming back, he had fallen out with Raila over the, the pulling back the mask. I have a perception. If you ask me, what next should we gonna do? I may be wrong, but go back to Raila. Kila mtu ayanda kwa uhuru zafasa saying they are going back to. They are living Raila, although we we'll never have to look at that. They are saying they are going back to Gashago. <laughs> because they want power. They want something. So, interest will best covered by Raila. That's my vote. 